So in Stardew Valley, you spend 84 in-game days planting, growing, and selling your crops, unlocking new features, and adjusting to the new seasons. Then you hit winter, and the world seemingly just... stops. You can no longer plant any crops, trees no longer grow, your animals don't come out, and the colorful world changes to a solid white. A lot of players, myself included, can feel like there's just nothing to do in winter, and reset to get a better start during the green months. That's why I've made this guide, to show all of the things you can do during the slowest month of the year, even if you didn't unlock the greenhouse. So first, it's the answer that many people don't want to hear, so we'll get it out of the way quickly, the mines. It's completely unaffected by what month it is outside, and you don't have to worry about using up all of your energy watering your crops. So that makes it a great month to bang it out if you haven't already. Of course, this also applies to the Skull Cavern if you have that unlocked. Speaking of the Skull Cavern, the desert is also completely unchanged, no matter what season it is. So you can still grow trees here and tap them as well. You are still able to grow trees back in your farm, but only if they have tree fertilizer. It's unlocked at level 7 foraging, and although you can't find fiber on your farm during winter, you can easily grind for it on floors 20 to 30, or 80 to 110 of the mines. Back on the home front, there's actually a couple of benefits to winter. This is a fantastic time to start working on your friendship with villagers, because one of the winter forageables, the crocus, is universally liked for everyone except for Clint, George, and Sebastian. All of those blackberries that you probably collected back in fall are also liked by about a third of the people in the valley. There's also a whopping nine birthdays in winter, so make sure you stay on top of it. Don't have enough crocuses for everyone? Croci? Well, good thing you have entire fields of farming space empty so that you can grow winter foraging seeds. They work exactly like regular crops, except when they're harvested, they give foraging experience instead of farming experience. This also happens to be the perfect time to grow forageable seeds, because this is the only time that the price of the four forageables used to make the seeds is higher than the seeds themselves. So not only will you have plenty of gifts for villagers, but you'll be making a ton of money as well. You will have to hit level 7 foraging to unlock the crafting recipe, but you do get 30 for free once you complete the winter foraging bundle in the community. Community center. And if you have the forging skills that have a chance to double the amount of forgeables you get and make them all iridium, that does apply to any forgeable seeds grown. Thanks to the version 1.5 update, we have a whole new set of challenges to focus on, the special orders. These are pretty hefty challenges, so all of the extra time you'll have will do well here. Also, you can't get any challenges that are impossible to complete in winter, such as the crop gathering missions, so don't worry about that. Funny enough, you get the only other crop that can grow in winter from a special order, fiber seeds. It's unlocked by doing the community cleanup challenge, and once again, it works just like any other crop, but it doesn't give you any experience and it produces fiber, which is useful since you can't find any other fiber on your farm during winter. While walking around in winter, you may notice a drastic increase in the number of artifact spots you find around the valley. This is because instead of grass, where artifact spots normally can't be found, there's now snow, where they can be found. It's worth walking around the valley every few days just to make sure that you don't miss any. This could make completing the museum a bit easier for you. This is also how you find two of the winter forageables, which leads me to my next point. Cheating! I mean, more efficient clay farming. You may or may not be familiar with clay farming. Basically, you hoe the same spot until you get clay, and then you start hoeing in a specific pattern that guarantees that you'll get clay with every single hoe. Lucky for us, in winter, two other things can be gotten instead of clay, winter roots and snow yams. Not only are these a lot more common than clay, which means it's easier to get started, but they also sell for a lot more. Clay sells for 20 gold each, and on average, snow yams and winter roots sell for 85 gold each, more than quadrupling the amount of money you'll make. There's a ton of guides on YouTube that go more in depth into clay farming if you like to see it, but that's a bit more than what I want to put in this video. On a good day of clay farming, you can get around 2,000 gold, but a good day of winter forageable farming can easily earn you around 10,000 gold. Number 10, decorate your farm. Since you don't have any crops, now's a great time to get everything organized the way you like it. Set down some paths, move around buildings, build fences around your crops, change where your crop field is, go crazy. So I don't want to assume what you do and don't have unlocked in winter, but if you did unlock the greenhouse by completing all the crop bundles, 
It works all year round for any crop. You can't actually buy any crops from Pierre in winter, for now, but you can always buy some from Sandy in the Oasis. She also happens to sell one of the best crops in the game, starfruit, which is normally a summer seed, but of course you can plant them in your greenhouse whenever you want. You can also plant any fruit trees that you like in here and they'll produce all year instead of just one season. This is mostly intended to be an early game guide, but it's worth mentioning, if you have unlocked Ginger Island, it's completely unaffected by the season as well, meaning that you can do anything you normally do, including plant any crop you like. And finally, this is a fantastic time to prepare for the upcoming spring. You still have many years ahead of you and this downtime can be spent making your next spring the most profitable time yet. Acquire your army of sprinklers. Upgrade your tools, especially the ones that have to do with farming, since you probably won't be using them this month. Work on buying some pigs so that once spring does come, they'll be fully grown and ready to give you some truffles. Also, you've gone an entire season without any grass. If you buy some grass starter from Pierre and plant it on the very last day of winter, it'll spread like crazy on spring first. It can be a great way to replenish your silos. That'll do it! Hopefully this helps with the FOMO that a lot of us feel when we get to winter, realizing that we didn't do every little thing we could possibly do before it. My first playthrough I literally reset because I didn't have the greenhouse, and I consider that a mistake. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one, and good night.